Hi, everyone. Welcome to Wellness Wednesdays. Today we have with us Ed Greer, Dean of the VCU School of Business. Since March 2010, Ed Greer has served as the Dean of VCU School of Business. Under his leadership, the school is implementing an ambitious strategic plan called EPIC to drive the future of business through the power of creativity. You may also know that before coming to VCU, Dean Greer spent 29 years with the Walt Disney Company. His career spanned the globe from Orlando to Paris to Tokyo to Anaheim, giving him priceless insight into the international perspectives needed for students to flourish now and in the future. If you've been with us before for a virtual Wellness Wednesday, you'll know that the Office of Student Engagement is featuring different areas from the Gallup Five Essential Elements of Wellbeing. These are career well-being, social, community, physical, and financial well-being. I'm Kate Burns, the Director of the Office of Student Engagement at the VCU School of Business, and I'll be your host for today. As questions come to you, please type them in the chat and you can send them to everyone or you can send them to me privately if you prefer. And I'll field the questions when the time comes. So let's get started and I'll turn it over to you, Ed. Thanks for being here with us. Okay, well, thank you. And I know we have limited time, so I will do a brief introduction. And you know, Kate talked about Gallup and how they study wellness and they have the five components and you get a two for today. You get social and you get community. So I'll talk a bit about the, both of those. Just kind of a, going back a bit, I worked the Gallup organization when I was with the Disney company uh, on several different projects and they're just fantastic in what they do. So I'm a big fan of the Gallup organization. At the time they were in Lincoln, Nebraska. Now that I think they moved to Omaha. So a little background there. So one of the things I want to talk about first is the social aspect of wellness. And in the context of social, I'll relate more to the work environment. And one of the things that I think is so important for leadership is set the right tone in the work environment. Now, I know it's a little different now. <laughs> We're not physically there. But I think the tone, I hope that we set uh, from the environment at Sneed Hall and the like, carries through even in this virtual setting. So one of the things I like to do is talk about my Disney uh, training. It had a big impression on me, my family, uh, because I was there a long time. So I'd like to carry that through the conversation a bit. So one of the things that I relate to from a, let's call it a social environment, is emotional. You, know, you want to feel good about where you are. And I'll play a little introduction. Kate did a really good introduction for me. But sometimes I get a different introduction, and I'll, and I'll show you that right now. Okay, so who didn't like that? You know, I, I can't get the emotional feel from the screen, but usually when I show things like that, people say, oh, I really, I understand what that, that music brings. It brings out that emotion inside of you. And that's what I hope to do at the VCU School of Business, that we want people to be emotionally connected, not just to the physical place, but most importantly to the people inside the building. And that is the emotional connection that lasts a lifetime. And there were a lot of studies in the Gallup book that Kate referenced that when people have a best friend at work, they perform better for whatever reason. We spend a lot of time at work. So it's like your second home a lot of times. So that well-being in the work environment works very well, not just for employees, but certainly for students and our faculty. All of that works together. You've been in places I know that you say, I don't feel good coming here. I just dread going to work. Hopefully that's not the case when we ask our folks to come to Sneed Hall, which is the primary work location for everyone. Now you're at home, I know it feels totally different, but I just wanna carry that theme on just a bit. So if we can just keep going just a little bit, talk about me personally. This is a brief uh, kind of bouncing around the globe, my Disney experience, and that was different places you can see on the map there. But every place I went, the environment was so important from the leadership there. What tone are you setting? 
Are people enjoying what they do? Didn't matter the culture, didn't matter the language, it was pervasive no matter what. The leadership was always important, setting the tone. And I will tell you, we used to do surveys on our leadership all the time. And there was one question they were always asked, would you work for this leader again? That was kind of a bellwether for everything. If you did well on that, you knew you set a good tone for the environment. So I just want to talk about that. Now, Disney is a big company, right? And we learned all these lessons from Disney. And if you go to the next one, we always talk about the Disney difference. What is that difference? And then I always talk about leadership making a difference, setting the tone. It's, it's a good thing. But at Disney, of course, is a great storytelling country, uh, company, rather. So I'm going to give you a couple of slides that so will give you some insights to leadership and why these little things you can remember that will help you in your workplace and help you in your home environment also. The first one is pretty easy. Remember, everyone's important. I don't have to tell you what this story is, right? Cinderella, you know, she wasn't treated well. You know, she got, let's call it, it was boarding on abuse in the home setting, that she had to do all the hard work. But you have to remember in every setting, everyone's important. From the person that dusts your office at overnight to the full professor, to the dean. Everyone's important. And they have to be treated with respect. So the appreciation and respect is very vital in any organization to be important. So let's go to the next one. Break them all. Particularly now, you know, we're under these really tough circumstances and the things that worked yesterday aren't gonna work tomorrow. So we're in the process of breaking them all. We, you all know we went to online in rapid time period this is our sixth week, you know, this is our reading day. So we've gone through a period that we really had to break the mold a lot faster and probably not in the same fashion that we wanted to, but we had to. And I think you can look at this picture here. I hope you remember this uh, Pixar movie, but I won't tell you what it is. I'll let you just try to remember it and someone can help you out. One of your work buddies can do that. So the next one, please. This is what I love, you know, knock down hassle. This is so important. Who wants to go through any hassles at work? We want to make things easier. If there's something that doesn't work, we want people to talk about it. Say, like, can, can we change this process? Can we change how we're doing it? This is Etna from The Incredibles. And the hassles for her, she was a great person that designed costuming, where she had capes on. She said, no capes. You know, capes can kill people. So you can understand that. No hassle. I love knocking down hassles. That's a great thing to say. I knock one down for you. Equally as important, is this one from a leadership standpoint. Stay humble and always be available. I think that's so important today that in this Zoom technology that we're going through and we're doing it right now, how do we communicate with people? Are we available for them? Now, when you're in office, you set an office door, policy, open door policy rather, yeah, we do have that. But now we, don't, we can't say that, but you just have to be available. So I get calls all the time, Zooming is probably, maybe too much zooming and I get all zoomed out, but I need to make myself available. People need to hear from me. So you need to do that as well. So those are important elements from a social aspect, really quickly using a little bit of Disney memorization there. I hope you can relate to those characters and some of them. This was the king of Wakanda, very humble, but a very powerful king, uh, but he was humble and always available to people that needed him, so. Quickly, we keep going. Now, so I had that Disney experience, and so I bring that from Anaheim to Richmond because it was transferable, and I think it really is. It's worked for me, but the reason it's worked for me because I have great colleagues around me. They kind of buy into what we want to do here. Not only buy into it, they embrace it, but they also carry it forward also. So I, I'm very pleased with the work environment that we have, but we can always do better. And that's when we have to take the feedback and just work on things harder and harder. So I feel really good about that. So let's transition to the next one. I'll go quickly on this one. This is the whole community involvement piece. And that was the other portion that the Gallup folks talked about. What does the community mean to you? So if you look at these various logos out there, they're all across the map. Everywhere I went, I was very fortunate that I felt that I need to give back to the community, whether it's working at their local hospitals, working with the Chamber of Commerce here, and you can see the variety of the uh, in, variety of, of, uh, that I've worked with. Now, these are ones that still are very close to me, and I was drawn to them. 
But I can tell you one of the things that I learned from the Gallup folks, they used to always say, there's a community bucket, right? And are you taking out of that bucket or are you filling up the bucket? And when you're putting back into the bucket, you feel really good about it. It lifts your spirits. It brings you closer to the community. The community brings themselves close to you. You embrace it. So I always say, no matter where you are, you live, get involved in that community. It'll make you feel good. It really does. It means more to me to give back than I get from uh, these organizations. And trust me, try it sometime. It's powerful. And you can say, and people say, how do you have time to do it? I make time for it. If you look at a variety of boards that I'm on, people say, I can't believe you do that many. It because it gives me energy. I'm not tired. Everybody's tired. But after I come the, from these meetings, no matter if it was a tough call we had to make, I knew I was doing something good for the community, something good for that organization. And it brings me back time and time again. So that's quickly kind of a, an overview of the social piece, the community piece. And I'm looking forward to just answering your questions about me personally, how I'll do it, and certainly how at BCU is going to be important to. Uh, um, so anyway, that's quick. I think I'm out of time for that. I'll turn it back over to Kate uh, for you to ask me questions or, or even people on the call. I should say a call. The Zoom, what do we call these things? Zoom connection that we're on, because uh, these are very important elements that we should talk about. Yeah, thanks so much, Ed. Um, so we, so I love your overview. Everyone is important. Uh, we should be thinking of breaking the mold, eliminating hassles, and staying humble and being available. We have a few, a good handful of shout outs for your slides. So folks really like. Um, yeah. I work hard on those. <laughs> Actually, I, you know, my secret weapon for slides and presentations. Uh, it's a good, great pot pot is Romana, so she helps me quite a bit on these things. Well, you were a great team in putting them together. Shout out to Romana. Um, so there's there's some appreciation for the breaking the mold slide, mm -hmm. um, really thinking that it ties into creativity at work. Um, also, the one with Chadwick Bosman, he's my man. Okay. <laughs> Um, and then, oh my God, I love these slides. So uh, really nice, fun, engaging way to tell some pretty poignant points. Um, so I was say just one thing, I think uh, from a communication standpoint, for me at least, when people would tell stories, I could connect to them. We have our own way of connecting to stories and whatever images come to our mind. So these, these Disney images help kind of uh, crystallize that for me. So I hope it works for everyone else on the, on the call. I think so. So one of the questions that came in um, is someone is wondering if you have practical tips on making sure everyone feels important in the workplace mm -hmm. at this time of virtual connection. Hmm. Well, it's certainly easier if you're in the physical space to make them feel important. I, and I would say this from a couple of ways how I used to do it. It can be a simple acknowledgement. Sometimes eye contact, just a nod of the head made a difference uh, for people. So I think that's a practical tip that I always use. And I think people like to hear from you, whether it's a short message, a text message is how you're doing. I think those things all mean a lot. It's a little difficult in this environment, but I will say those relationships that we've built over time are carrying us through this gap period that we have. So whatever worked for you during those time period, however you talk to people, you know, make a, I think the humor piece has always been working for me. And I think sometimes when I first got here, it took a while for people to get used to that. They're like, did he just say that? Nothing, you know, offensive or anything, but I think people just didn't know how to take that. So I think be yourself. And I think the authenticity uh, means a lot to people. They'll know if you're just not really meaningful and you're, saying hello, well, that didn't sound like a really hello. Um, but that's, that's what I do. Just a simple acknowledgement and people know you're connected. It doesn't take much. Um, I, and like I said, eye contact, we, you know, we can't shake hands in like that, but we can do a virtual fist pump or whatever it is now. That's what it takes. That's all it's gonna take. And people will know it, they, they will feel it. Thanks, yeah, different ways to break the ice and really bring ourselves to the table so that people know we're being genuine and authentic because so many times that can go so far mm -hmm. um, and set, set apart those connections and the, the relationships from the others that are just surface level. Yeah. So 
Oh, that's great. Thanks. Um, okay, so here is another one. Um, even though classes are over officially now, yes. um, our students may need us more than ever during the summer classes and heading into the fall. Right. Um, what are some ways you think we can continue to support them? Well, I, I think um, we have to get to know them individual basis. I think you think about the 3,700 students that we have in the School of Business. That's a lot of students. But I think it's important to get to know people. Um, you don't want to pry in their, you know, let people, let them give you the information that's natural for them. And you'll find that, you'll find that once that happens, you'll find a connection point that's important for that student, to that professor or to that advisor, whoever it might be. That, that works for me. Because I think sometimes we forget that. You're in a relationship, a uh, professor to a student, school of business, but that personal aspect of it means a lot. You know, it could be a small thing. How's your mom doing? You know, is she, or how's your father doing or your other siblings? If you know things about people like that, uh, it's very helpful. And I think it's important. One of the things I do, and this is kind of going off a little bit from the question, but my calendar, everyone can see it. If they want to, they can see it. And they can see what's important to me on my calendar. I'm going to talk to my son, Daniel, for whatever it might be. Or, you know, if it's something confidential, it's not going to be in there. But you can talk to my assistant. It's all on there because I don't think you can separate the two. So even though school of business, these students are here for an education, rightly so, there's other aspects of their life. Not to pry, you shouldn't do anything like that. But how you get to know people is very, very important to them. And you'll be amazed. Just simple recalling things like that helps them along the way because we all need that emotional help right now and we all feel a little bit lonely so something that can pick us up during the day is so much more important now than it was two months ago yeah thank you and those those are some really good thoughts when thinking of social well-being and how we connect one-on-one -on -one with our relationships with others yeah. um we have some a few questions here about community well-being which okay. relates to you know diving in with our communities around us and the organizations um, like some of them that you mentioned on your last slide right. so one of them here is what are some ways that you have maintained your involvement with all of the community um, organizations mm -hmm. that you are involved with when, you know, in-person board meetings and traveling is kind of off the table right now? What are some ways that you've um, maintained those connections or that they have reached out to you to stay involved? Um, I think, again, because of the relationships were strong, um, and these organizations really need the help. So they're finding breaking, breaking the mold as well to get their work done. And how can they have an emotional appeal? Oh, they have to do it through more marketing, through their social media now. So they're, they're doing that. And they're doing it in a way that's not offensive. I saw one the other day at my son just finished Mount Sinai Medical School. And it was an ad on television. And they talked about how hard it is for the healthcare workers up there. And they said, look at this symbol. It, was like, it, was, it wasn't a QR code, I forgot what it was. And they said, just take your phone and hover it over this. And it went right to their website to said, please give. And it had this emotional appeal for the healthcare workers for you know, personal protection equipment, whatever it was. So I think that's how they're doing it. And I think it works for me. And I think you find something that you're attached to and it's not hard to be drawn into it. So for me, and it makes you feel good about it. It really does. It, it lifts your spirits when you, when you give to something like that. Baxter Perkinson, who's a famous dentist for VCU and has a successful business, and they asked him, why does he give? He said, because it feels good. He said, it makes me feel good. I think that's part of it. And I think that's how I stay connected to him. I feel good about it. Okay, thanks. And so I've also something you mentioned that a lot of the zoom meetings that we're having right now mm -hmm. are with people that we already have relationships with, whether it's coworkers, friends, um, different committees that we're on. Um, here's a question that we have where relationships aren't already established. Yeah. 
So some students are about to graduate and may be moving to a new community. Uh, what practical tips do you have for getting involved in a new community, especially right now? Well, I think the VCU brand has gotten so strong and the Ram Nation is worldwide. And I think one of the things that's been powerful for me, when you say, where do you work? And they recognize the name, people kind of perk up. The same will happen if you're in a new community. Seek out those fellow VCU graduates. It's amazing. I, I will tell you this. If I get a note on LinkedIn, whatever, and it says, hello, and I'm a VCU, whatever, I perk up right away. So I do think the connection as being a member of the VCU family expands beyond belief now, even more so today. So I would rely on that heavily. And when I first took this job, I was one of my colleagues in California said, you need to make sure you build a brand that is so strong that a graduate from VCU responds to another student, a potential graduate, in a powerful way. So when they see that name pop up, say VCU, they're going to want to call them back and they welcome the relationship. And I think we've really started to do that. I try it. I really, I'm telling you, just try it. Find someone, if you're in a different community, say I'm a VCU, whatever, or I work there, relationships that I have VCU, it's sticky. It makes it work. So I would use that. And I think it's a powerful tool, particularly now. People want to help you. Okay, great. Yeah. And so there are a few different ways to do that. So anyone who has a LinkedIn profile, you know, you can search under the alumni section on LinkedIn and narrow it down to a particular industry of interest or a city. So if you're moving to a new city, that's a great place to start. And then like Dean Greer was saying, reach out, you know, explain that you're a recent grad um, and that you're getting acquainted with the city and um, this is, you know, a new home for you. So if that fellow Ram could give you some tips on, or maybe what's your favorite place to eat, um, a good conversation starter. Um, what are, Dean Greer, what, do you, what are some other good conversation starters in that case where someone's reaching out um, to an alumni that they're just getting to know? Well, I, I do a little research, you know, who you're reaching out to. Uh, and many times you'll see on LinkedIn or you can just call and find out about that person. Find out where there's a common interest. Maybe it's sports, maybe it's reading, maybe it's their favorite book, maybe it's movie, whatever it might be. The common interest is a great starter because you can strike a conversation with them. You know, if, uh, Kate, we could, I could talk to you about, you know, TV broadcasting because your husband and, and how his greatness there. And you're like, oh, really? Let's talk about it. It's an easy starter for you. And it leads to something else. So find something that you're comfortable with and they're comfortable with. May not always match up, but there's always a weave to make it work. And you can always bring it back to something that you're comfortable with. And that's a great connection point. That seems to work for me. You'd be amazed. I mean, it doesn't take much. It can be almost anything. Baseball, art, travel maybe not so much travel anymore, museums, whatever it may be, just find that connectivity. It, it works. Trust me, it works. This is when you have the creativity at work and you bring that, that power that you've been learning at VCU. So. A, a conversation um, starter could even be, I see you love to travel. If you could travel anywhere right now, right, right. <laughs> where would you want to be? Um, cause we I, I would will... say New Zealand because they seem to have conquered the virus somehow, but anyway. That's right. <laughs> tight, tight command over um, the virus. Um, okay, so here's, so here's one with, that has to do with time management. And you mentioned your calendar is not a secret um, that, that folks can see what really is important to you. Um, you know, we were in looking in the two areas of well-being, social and community, they're a bit different. They have some overlap. It deals with relationships. Right. Um, the social really focuses on the one-on-one -on -one relationships. And again, community is being involved out in the community. Mm -hmm. How do you decide what's important to you? Mm -hmm. And um, when all of these opportunities are out there to connect either one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting, what do you say yes to? And what, what do you say no? Hmm. Have you been talking to my fabulous assistant that keeps me in check, Liza? Have you got to talk to her? Have you talked to her? 
<laughs> I know you have. Uh, I, I think a couple of things. Um, it's hard for me to say no, and that's one of my faults. Uh, so I sometimes take on too much. But you have to kind of go through what's important for you in a short term and long term and stay focused on that. Um, back in my Disney days, when all the leadership had to take time management courses, and that was important. That was the thing saying, what are the key priorities for you, intermediate, long term, and personal? And you had to look at them together and figure it out. So for me, uh, I just, uh, the things that I'm passionate about, passionate about, it's easy to do them. So I lean toward those. But I think you have to find a way to have a discipline saying, I don't really like doing that one, but I need to do it. And find a way to say, I've checked that one off and stay on task with it. For me, I have a, a built-in advantage. Liza's great. I mean, she's the master of you know, making sure things work. But she also knows my uh, capacity. She has a good sense for that. She said, you only need to sleep four or five hours. So what are you, what are you complaining about? So <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but I think that's part of it. You have to know your own capacity and strength. I, for me, fortunately, I, I have someone like that that can help me stay on task. I have a great team around me, my senior leadership team. We meet every week to stay on task, what's important for the VCU School of Business. And we keep each other accountable for that. So that's a great thing. But whatever you make, make yourself a list, however it's good for you, whether it's on paper, or you do it electronically, keep track of it that way. And the ones that are important, keep them top of mind and in focus for you because it's easy to forget because things happen so rapidly now. But I think time management and whatever you want to take a mini course on it, those always, it's always a good thing to remind you of saying, ah, this is a way for me to stay on track. You have to stay on track. Uh, but have a little fun in there also. I would say you, you have to try to allow for that. That's good for me. If I can, you know, do a little bit of relaxation, whatever that might be, it's, it helps you stay on, on track also. Great, thanks. And so we have time for one more. We're getting right up on our time. Yeah. And you mentioned- yeah, you have a clock behind you. That keeps, I can look <laughs> I at do, it. I do, I do. That keeps me focused. Um, that you mentioned that you and the senior leadership team of the School of Business meet frequently to talk mm -hmm. about the future and um, your vision and executing it. And so this one really relates to that. So mm -hmm. how do you foresee the future of the School of Business community once we can eventually return? Oof, uh, I wish I had all the answers for that one. I think the uncertainty surrounds everything we're doing. I think one thing's for sure, we won't go back to where we were, totally. When I say it, I don't mean it in a negative way. We fast forward it with this uh, online remote learning. I think there are certain advantages that is revealing right now for us from a flexibility standpoint from a travel standpoint for our professors and our other staff folks. Uh, I think that's part of it. So we will capitalize on that. We have to regroup and have some new learnings. You know, we talked about in the very beginning, you know, Epic, which is our you know, tagline, it's gonna be Epic Plus now, and we know that. So whether we say we're gonna be more inclusive now, the research part is gonna look different, all those things, we're gonna build upon those. And I think that's gonna be the difference. We have to meet the students where they are differently, I think. Our professors are gonna feel different about it. Our staff people are feeling different about the work environment. But this type of compression of time, and because we had to, is gonna reveal things we never even thought about it. So I'm so looking forward to that creative innovation piece that will reveal itself. So I do think we'll use technology differently, uh, but I think the relationship piece is gonna to have to be really stronger now because we know we miss it. And we feel that lack, that void. It's a true void. So, but I, and I know we're, it's uncertainty and it feels uncomfortable. But if we can stay together like this, we're all in this together. I think whatever happens on the other side, I can't totally predict that. I wish I could. Um, we're going to be better off for it. We will be. And I think saying better off for it, I know we're out of town. So one thing I wanted to do, mm -hmm. I don't know how many folks on the, on the Zoom connection here that are graduating this year. So I just want to say congratulations, you've done it. I know we won't have the typical commencement exercises and pomp and circumstances that we have. We're gonna do it virtually. Hope you've heard about that. So I just want to congratulate the graduates of 2020. Uh, well done. I wish I could shake your hand across the stage or whatever the case may be. I can't do that, but I really appreciate everyone just hanging in there and getting through this last semester, which I know wasn't easy for anyone, uh, but I'm proud of them all. 
Thanks so much. And congratulations to the class of 2020. Um, Dean Greer, we've really enjoyed having you here. I feel like this could go on. We could keep on talking about our connections and relationships in the community and socially um, really all day because that's what makes the world go round. That's right. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, so I'm, uh, you were a great host. So thank you. I, I love having that clock in the background just keeping me on task. So that's really good. So time management works well. So we're slightly over, but thank you for having me. Thank you. And to everyone on here, have a great rest of your Wednesday and a great rest of your week. Students, good luck with exams. And once again, congratulations, class of 2020. We know you'll make it real.